And now, around the world and around the corner, it's the David Bowers Awards, bringing the best in indie music to millions of listeners worldwide with your host, the David Bowers. We've got a fantastic lineup of guests, as well as our engineer extraordinaire, Nick the Geek, our entire crew here at the Asylum, and me, I'm John Bon Jovial. And now, here's the voice of indie music, the David Bowers. Thank you very much, John Bon Jovial, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary John Bon Jovial. Welcome aboard for another week of our music and everything else that we do here. Uh, we have a, a show with a couple of young artists from, uh, actually, let's see, one's from England, one's from Italy, and uh, we'll have them here in just a little bit. We want to say hello to Mary Perry up there in Rochester, New York, an accredited disability representative who underwrites the David Bowers Awards on Rochester Free Radio, WRFZ, FM 106.3. Thank you so much, Mary Perry. We really appreciate that. And uh, want to say hello to all of our friends in Rochester and uh, welcome you aboard for another The David Bowers Awards. We have a, uh, it's going to be a really interesting show, I think, because uh, as I said, we've got some newer artists than uh, we are normally fortunate enough to have and we're looking forward to it because it's nice to get to know these artists early in their career and be able to follow them much as we did our last guest from a couple of weeks ago um wild horse from london or from england or from the uk and uh, we followed them through the last uh, what four years of their career and it's really exciting and really refreshing to watch them grow and to be able to share that growth with you uh, to the point where they have become uh, they become a force in rock music now and they're even branching out and showing that they can do you know other types of music rather than just pure rock and roll and uh, it's it's really exciting we're going to have a couple of uh, couple of artists like that on here today we'll be talking with and playing some of their music in just a little bit but first we want to take a moment to uh, to share some sad news, as uh, as you know, uh, last week we lost a legend in the music business and an American treasure, Mr. Charlie Daniels, and uh, it was something of a surprise. And of course, we were we were very taken aback, as was everybody in the music business, especially those who known him and had a chance to meet him, talk to him, and and get to know the person that Charlie Daniels was, because Charlie was a very special person. He not only was a an excellent musician, a friend to everybody in the business, he was also an American, and whether you agreed with him or not, he was not afraid to voice his opinion, and he would stand by it to the end. And uh, you got to respect the man for that. Uh, comments, John Bon Jovi? Well, you know, we we got to know Charlie a little bit through the three or four interviews that we did with him. And while you're right, you know, politically, he would speak his mind. I agreed with some of the things he said. I disagreed with some of the things he said. But he never, ever once gave me an excuse to disrespect him or disrespect his opinions. He was a real, true patriot. He was a good man. And, uh, yeah, he made it to 83. He lived a good long life, but I wish he was still with us because he was great. I mean, there's just no, no way around it. He was such a huge talent. Uh, I mean, he was the musician's musician. He, he could, he could pick, he could fiddle, he could sing, he could write, he could entertain. And, and he always had a great one-liner, and he treated us with respect. He and, was always genuinely glad to be on the show with us. Absolutely, and uh, you, I think you uh, you summed it up very well. Uh, whether you agreed with him or not, you could always respect the man, and uh, I think that's one of the things that made him stand apart, not only in the music world, but in Americana and as an American he was uh, he was what uh, we want our representatives of this country to be Darn and right. to personify absolutely yeah absolutely i we had a uh, he, he said many things of interest import and some things were kind of funny i i've got a clip here 
of his last interview that he did with us. And uh, it's just a short clip, but I'm going to play it for you and uh, let you listen to it because I think uh, I think it kind of sums up Charlie Daniels, the man. Let's let's roll that clip. Well, the Country Music Hall of Fame thing is uh, I can't even articulate what I feel about it. It's just it's such an honor, such a blessing from God that I just can't even put it in words. In fact, when they put the medallion around my neck, I don't even know what I'm going to say yet. I probably stand there and blubber, I guess. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of when when I got asked to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry, I, I said this is the this is the icing on top of the cake. And when I got asked to be a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, I said this is the cherry on top of the icing. So that's about as well as I can put it. What do you put on top of the cherry? I really don't know. Charlie Daniels, gone but not forgotten, ever. I think the cheers pretty A much say it all, don't they? I mean, they what? The, the, he, they do. They brought he he brought people to their feet every every single time, and he was he was always such a gentleman with us. He 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 was a yeah, genuine was. article. He really was. I let's we'll have a moment of silence to remember Charlie Daniels. Thank you very much. Uh, talking to Charlie was uh, was an honor and a pleasure, and uh, we're so glad we got to share that and also to share it with you. This is, of course, the David Bowers Awards, and we pride ourselves on every show being an award show so that every guest who's on here, however big or small, new or uh, longstanding, whatever their status, they are all automatically award winners. And uh, we are proud and happy to be able to do that and to also share some of the music that you might not otherwise get to hear and, of course, get to talk with the artists so that you can hear where they're coming from, what they have to say, what their feelings are, and we hope you enjoy it. We'd love to get your letters, your emails. You can send us your notes of what you like and what you don't like. We want to know that, too. Send them to david at thedavidbowers.com and... uh, We'll, uh, we read every single one of them, I can promise you that. We may not mention everyone on the air, but we do read each and every single one of them, and we appreciate hearing from you. Don't forget to contact the artist, too, because they like to hear from you. That's how they find out what you like and don't like. And uh, we always recommend you get a hold of them, talk to them on their, uh, on their social media, uh, whether it's uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is, Instagram. Stay in touch with them. Find out what's going on directly from the artist because, hey, you are why they do what they do. And without you, they don't have a job, <laughs> it's, which the time and tide right now has pretty much shown with the lack of uh, being able to do uh, live shows. It pretty much shows that without the public, the artist's, don't have a job. John Bon Jovial, how are things in Bon Jovial land? Well, you know, we're here in Florida, which has a little minor problem with the coronavirus right now. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah, the other day, <laughs> I, you know, they, they broke the all-time record uh, of 15,300 certified infections in a 124-hour period. And... Uh, 
David, I got to tell you, I'm almost afraid to go outside right now. It's just, it is so crazy. Uh, and people are just, you know, there, there, there are these people out there that are just saying that this whole nonsense of wearing a mask and social distancing is, is all a big conspiracy set up by the government to control us. And, and folks, that's just not the case. And, you know, as, as one uh, comedian so aptly put it, just wear the damn mask. You know, it, it's, it, it's, it's not exactly. like, it, it's, it's not like, you know, you have to make terrible, horrible, awful sacrifices uh, and it could save your life. And so that's what's going on here in Florida. It is just, uh, uh, it's become the epicenter of the coronavirus worldwide now. Worldwide. Yes. Florida is the yep. hot spot. And, uh, figuratively we, and literally. We were the other hot, we were the other hot spot before you, uh, you took that uh, awful title away from us. Distinction, uh, yes. Here in Arizona, it has been horrible. Uh, we're up to, uh, at, as of this recording, uh, which was back on the 13th of July, uh, we are up to uh, 90% of our our facilities, our, our hospital facilities and ICU are in use, which doesn't leave you a lot of cushion for more, and we know it's not over yet. And it doesn't look like, honestly, it's going to be for, well, the words they use are foreseeable future which is uh, their way of saying longer than we'd like. And you're right, John Bon Jovial. Uh, it's it is a little inconvenient. I hate wearing the damn masks. I don't like it either, but it, I do. It's something that we have to do. I think our society, in a large part, has become a very self-centered society, and this is a non-selfish move, which goes against the the feelings right now, but. You know, the whole thing with the masks is, no, they are not going to protect you 100%, but they're going to go a long ways towards protecting somebody else. Now, even if you don't want to protect somebody else, you know, if that's not your thing and you don't care about the people that you come in contact with, stop and think that if the other guy felt that way, then he could be giving it to you. You know, look at it. From that perspective, we're all in this together. And unless we all do our part, it's going to be an awful long time before we get over this. And that, my friend, is going to be the ultimate inconvenience. Yeah, and, you know, this we're all in it together thing, it's become a grossly overused cliche, but it's true. Yes. It, yes, is, it is really true. You know, in Europe, they're getting a handle on it. And uh, and they've seen, uh, look at Italy. Italy was, you know, the hot spot of the world. And they've managed to get uh, get a handle on it by actually getting the citizens of their country to agree, whether it was a forced agreement or a voluntary agreement. Uh, and, and now no. their infection rate is going way down. We can do the same thing you here do, in the United States, but people do just don't want to. You to do exactly right. And believe me, you talk about sacrifices. Talk to some of the people that lived in the generations before us, the Depression, the 30s, the 40s with World War II. Yeah. Uh, believe me, wearing a mask nothing. is a small, it's nothing. small, insignificant sacrifice. We need to do it. we got to move along because we've got a show to produce here, and we've got some music for you, too. Our first guest is standing by. He comes from the United Kingdom and goes by a name that will be familiar to uh, just about everybody who is familiar with music. He is the UK's James Brown, and his music is a totally different type of music. We're going to give you a track right now, and then we're going to sit and talk with James for a little bit and find out all about the UK James Brown. Here he is with a tune called Blink. Just set me 